All right, what's good, folks? Welcome back to another What If? Yo, it's Dark Jerry 19, yo. And I believe this is a uh, What If Deku was an Uchiha Part 2. Uh, where we last left off, we, uh, a young man, soon to be named Azuka Midori, Azuka Midori Uchiha, was found by Inko Midori, a leader of, uh, this compound where the last remnants of, of, you know, ninjutsu or nindo or whatever the fuck you want to call it, were pretty much the last remnant is. She's taken in Deku, finding out that he's a new Shiha, and trained him alongside Yurichi, where he quickly formed a close bond to. And wants something, you know, even more. He joined UA. Well, no, he didn't have to join UA. He's taking the entrance exam along with Yorichi to join UA. And, you know, he, you know, destroyed robots and pretty much used Amaterasu on a zero pointer. And, you know, that's how it is. So yeah, let's begin this story. So we, we begin at the end of the entrance exams, where young is where young Izuku is is outside waiting for Yorichi Yorichi to yo you know come out of UA, and as he's leaning onto a tree, his clothes eyes closed as a few of his ravens surround him someone would actually call call out to him I say um excuse me as Deku would open his eyes and his ravens would you know, fly away as he looks upon the uh, female figure he's like oh it's you are you okay from all that rubble falling upon you? As we all know, this is pretty much Ochako. I just like, yeah. Thanks to you, I'm safe. Safe though, but how come you're how come you're here by yourself? If you don't mind me asking. As she, you know, sorts of kind of blushes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's like, well, I'm waiting for my self-proclaimed big stepsister, as Deku kind of rolls eyes at that, as Ochaka would, you know, you know, would kind of, would only kind of give Deku a confused look until they would hear. Until they would hear the front doors of UA opening, where Ochako would see a beautiful, dark toned, purple haired girl. As she would speak up, it's like, hey, Red Eyes, who's your friend? As Ochako actually getting a, a much better look. At the girl would be sort of shocked as as she seems you know more well developed well developed as, as you could say which <laughs> which kind of makes uh, Osako feel a little insecure as Deku would speak up uh, this is my I guess new friend Oshako. I saved her from a zero pointer I destroyed. No big deal. As your was like, ah, oh, well, that's cool. But but I just got a phone call from Miss Bedoria earlier. And and she uh said that she wanted us to, you know, come home right away after 
after at the entrance exam. She's probably worried about her baby boy as Yorichi would kind of nudge Deku with, you know, and as with, you know, with embarrassment as he would say, shut up, Yorichi. But, uh, anyway, we'll see you at, we'll see you at UA Ochako. If you, if you made it in, of course. And saying that, Yorichi would body flicker as Deku would turn into a flock of ravens as they leave. And if I were to, uh, accidentally say crows or anything like that and not correct myself, uh, just remember that Deku has ravens, not crows. And there's a reason why I chose ravens over the crows, but you won't really know in this part. <laughs> You'll know what I'm gonna uh, when I'm uh, picking hero names, <laughs> but that'll be later on. So, where was I? So yeah, time would let's say yeah time. Let's not waste any time as time would pass. As Deku in his room would be doing would be doing handstands, handstand push-ups as you can say one arm, one armed as his uh as one of his crows would be on his feet, watching him the whole time as he does do his little exercise. Until Inka would enter, and with a smile on her face, she would hand Deku an envelope with the UA stamp of approval. As he's like, well, is this for real? It's like, yes. As Inko's like, yes. Your note finally can't came in, yours and Yurichi. But I'll leave you in privacy and let you uh, read it yourself. So Deku would, you know, open it as he would take out a, sorry, take out a little pad as it would show a hologram of All Might as he would, you know, as we already know, he would explain that Deku got into class 1A and was in second place, <laughs> which sort of shocked, shocked Dezuku a little until, you know, he thinks about it. He thinks about it a bit and eventually, you know, already knows who got first. So yeah, Deku happy with his accomplishments would just put aside the little pad and envelope and get back to his exercise. So yeah. As the d days go on, I don't know, the days, the days go on, both, it, it, that's, yeah, that's days go on, it'll be, uh, finally time for Deku and Yorichi's first day of UA, as the two, as the two would, you know, make way towards it, towards it, using a body flicker and different types of, uh, you know, other fast boob bits that have in Naruto and all that jazz. They would make it, they would finally make it there, make it there, as the two would kind of fall from the sky, landing down gracefully, no cracks as the ninja should, as this kind of catches the attentions of those around them. But, you know, the two ignoring them would just make their way inside UA. 
inside UA and to and you know eventually finding their class where they would sort of be weirded out that the door was you know pretty huge so you know entering the class they would see that most of their classmates are already there as they would you know take their seats next to each other next to each other and wait others would and wait you know what I'm saying those who were already inside as in you know folks like Todoroki and Momo Todoroki and Momo or or even you know Bach going out in fools well Momo would sort of be staring at you know at our boy Deku while Todoroki is just you know wondering whether if whether if they are the ones who you know got first place and will you know actually give him a challenge because he thinks He's the best, and y'all, <laughs> nobody has taken him down yet. But yeah, as time passes, others would f finally enter the class. One of them being Ida, as he would notice Bakugo having his feet on the desk, feet on the desk, and knowing Ida. He would obviously complain about it due to the hand choppy motion bullshit we all know and love. And not only Ida, Ida would enter the class, but Hachako would be there. But <clears throat> she would not approach Deku as, as you know, her first time meeting. Yuri, she was a bit intimidating, not threatening, threatening wise, more of a, more of a, how could I say this? Hmm. You, you, you guys know what I mean. You, I, I don't know. I don't have to make anything up. You, you guys know why she feels threatened by Yurichi. Probably by her, you know, good looks and all. And Ochako, she wouldn't be the only one because she would actually she would notice that the other girls in the class would be taking peeks at Deku. Peeks at Deku. Some of them are able to hide it better than others, but they can. She, she can tell that they're all staring at, staring at Zuku, which is you know, you know the curse of the Uchihas. <laughs> Bitches won't leave you alone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you can you can stab them. You can practically kill them twice. Try to murder them twice. They still want to fuck you. Sakura. <laughs> Let me stop. <laughs> but what all that what all this commotion commotion going about the class? Our boy Sorry. Our boy Az Aizawa would finally uh, finally awake. Tired eyes and all. As he would unzip his unzip his sleeping bag and pull out a a gym bag full of clothes. As he speaks up, saying, "As he speaks up, all right, class, shut the hell up. We're about to get get started. My name is Shoto Aizawa, your homeroom teacher, and." Uh, now I need, I need y'all to get these gym clothes on, on and head outside so I can put you, you know, take make an assessment on your quirks. 
as Ochaka would, you know, kind of speak up about this scene. But shouldn't we head to orientation? As, you know, Aizawa not wanting to hear this saying, no, locker rooms, then outside, now. As Deku and Yurichi, Yurichi being raised as ninjas would follow the orders of their teacher, teachers as they would take up, you know, their clothes, their clothes and head out and head outside as, you know, the rest of the class would have no choice but to follow follow as everyone would go to their respected locker room and in a guy's locker room as everyone is changing they would most of the guys would be shocked to see Deku's scarred up yet ripped body which kind of makes Bakugo feel a little insecure, which only fuels his, which only fuels his anger. As Deku, as Deku would, as nobody else noticed, he would try to evade his eyes from, you know, the scars, as it only brings up bad memories that he doesn't really understand. And you know, we go to uh, the girls' locker room as Jiro would be using her earphone jacks, earphone jacks, as she's right now listening onto a conversation where Kurashima is complimenting the guy she was staring at in in class. And you know, as she listens for a while, someone would punch the wall, which makes Jiro jump. As Yurichi would speak out, saying, huh, "Guess Zuku knew you were listening onto his conversation. He's a very secretive type, not liking strangers knowing his business. So I would suggest you." Not listen, listen to his comments, listen to anything he says behind his back. And you know, Jiro would be rubbing her ears or earphones. I don't know, there's Jiro Jack, whatever, saying, saying, uh, what can he like see through walls or something? Which kind of makes the uh, other girls sort of jump out of embarrassment. Out of embarrassment. But not too bad as most of them wouldn't mind if it's only Zuku staring at <laughs> I'll I'll join the voice chat later. They wouldn't mind if it's, you know, Zuku staring at them. But Yorichi would speak out saying, speak out saying, no, no, nothing like that. It's just a sixth sense heat with him. Don't worry about it. You can't see through walls. Which some of the girls <laughs> would actually feel a little disappointed. But would finally sp would speak up in the conversation. He's like, "You guys seem close. What's your sh what's your story with Azuku? Hmm. Well, he's my stepbro. Yurichi would sp speak out. We grow we grew up together and trained." I trust him more than more than anyone to be honest. 
and <laughs> with this thought process, Yorichi would be a bit off as she thinks about the past several years of knowing Izuku. And she never had to question herself on how she felt about him until someone finally pointed out pointed it out. But she would shake those thoughts aside as she would, you know, quickly head out, not wanting to be questioned anymore. And as the other boys would finally head outside, head outside, Aizawa would call out Yurichi as she as he throws her a ball. Ball saying that you know since you got first place, you're gonna be throwing this uh ball right here. As far as you can. Oh as Yurichi would question uh will I be able to use my quirk? As he sh as Isaiah would nod his head. And and the fact that Aizawa was Aizawa says that she got first, this would actually catch the attention of both Bakugo and Todoroki, as this ir would irritate Bakugo, while Todoroki, he just, you know, wanted to know who got first place and who might give him a challenge. So, yeah, Yurushi would step up to the plate, to the plate, as she thinks a little bit on how she should do this. I close her eyes, focusing, until she finally opens it, as yellow electricity would course around her course around her as she throws the ball into the air and taking a leap into the air she would do a sort of spin kick at the ball sending it flying through the clouds as the whole class would be watching all of them shock except Deku as she as he knows Yurichi's full strength, and that wasn't it. That wasn't it. And I'm not. And Aizawa would have his little pad that re, that was recording the thing. And sorry, it would be recording and he would show some absurd amount of numbers which would shock the entire class and you know it was so good it was enough to enrage Bakugo as he would begin to charge towards Yorichi Yorichi, as she would take up a stance ready to put the beat down on Bakugo, but before before even Aizawa could pull out his scarf, two shadow clones of Deku would fall from the sky, sky tackling and pitting Bakugo to the ground, as one of the clones would speak out saying, what the hell do you think you're doing? As Bako, with rage, with rage, says, "Let go of me, Deku. I'm tired of you two, two showing me up, showing me up. You're not gonna do it in UA. 
I'm the best here, number one. Now get the hell off of me. As he would, you know, kind of struggle under the strength of, you know, two guys being on top of his back. Top of his back. As he would try to use his quirk, try to use his quirk, but they would notice that Aizawa would have his red eyes beaming towards Bakugo. As he would speak out saying, that's enough out of you, Bakugo. Out of you, Koski Bakugo. If I see another spat like that ever again, you're out of school, you hear me? As Aizawa would be looking at Bakugo dead serious. Dead serious, while Bakugo would reluctantly be forced to agree. So the clones would let go of Bakugo, as most of the class would wonder if that was Azuku's quirk. Azuku's quirk. As Kurashima. And Todoroki and them would wonder how did how did you know a cloning quirk get him second place? Second place is you know that kind of power is not really that strong. But yeah, as for the rest of the test. Rest of the tests, the running, the running, the side side jumps, the vertical jump, the grip strength, and all that jazz. All that jazz, uh. You already know that, yeah. Deku and Yurichi are the ones on top. So, let's just move on to the. Move on. Let's say, uh, yeah, the heroes versus villains. <laughs> we'll move on to the heroes. The next day, where the uh, heroes versus villains, as the class would be waiting, waiting for Aizawa, Aizawa, wondering if he, you know, fell asleep in the teacher's lounge. But as they wait, they would start to hear stomping in the hallways as it would get closer and closer and to boom somebody would burst through the door as is as the man would yell I am here you know what I'm saying everyone would be quite excited to see all night As they, you know, wonder why he's here. As he would, you know, start to explain that. From today, I, I will be your teacher. Be your teacher. And I plan on training you future heroes to be, maybe, to be better than I. If that's possible. <laughs> But, but before we can even begin this training, all heroes must have a good look, don't you? But you know. So, he would hit the wall as panels would uh, come down as it would reveal briefcases with the hero suits that everyone has ordered as they were all pretty excited so everyone would take would take their name branded name branded a uh, case as they would make their way 
towards their respected locker room. So, it would take some time for everyone, but eventually folks would would come out with their, you know, costumes and all. As as a <laughs> you could say most of the females would actually be surrounding Deku, wanting compliments from him from him, from him about their suits as they would also be complimenting Deku's Deku's suit as well as it's pretty much this right here a a black yet grayish stitched up type hood hood with the Uchiha symbol on the hood on the right side of the hood as it's more of a stealth like type thing type uh the sh it, it has the shinobi the black shinobi pants we all know and what know know well enough as a uh, the the same shinobi shoe the sh shinobi sandals that we're, we're pretty much pretty familiar with alongside with uh, some finger fingerless gloves fingerless black gloves as most folks would f f find it kind of badass as it's, it's not it's not too flashy but it would get you know a lot of attention as Ochako would speak out saying Deku your outfit is so cool so cool as Deku would say still with that stone face stone cold face as he's not the type to smile much would thank Ochako as just you know only makes her you know blush blush as the other girls would be a little jealous of all the uh, this attention that the chocolate's kind of getting as they would also speak out of about uh Deku's badass outfit until Yurichi would finally come out of her locker room locker room and he's like as she speaks out saying yeah her outfit is pretty cool pretty cool red eyes but what do you think about this as everyone would look towards Yurichi in a skin type black suit with a Kinoichi like orange kim kimono kimono as Mineta and the other perverted guys would sort of be drooling while most of the most of the girls who wasn't really paying attention to Yurichi while they were uh putting on their hero suits would finally you know get a good look at her and and you know be irritated on how you know even though she's the same age as them be well developed more well developed even having a bigger bust in Momo which even Mo feels a little inferior by, by, it. as Deku would find the outfit pretty badass. 
as Yurichi would thank her baby stepbro. As, as she would say this, not knowing that she's actually blushing a little. So yeah. All Might would get everyone's attention, telling everyone that all their hero suits are pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. So they can we can finally start this uh this test as he would, you know, shuffle through a few names as he would yell out the first match as he said, for the hero team, it will be young Azuku Midoriya Uchiha and and a partner being Ochako Uraka. And as for the villain team, it will be young Kasuke Bakugo. And as for his partner, Yorichi, I don't know her last name. <laughs> I didn't really look it up. I should have. <laughs> so yeah. Zuku and Yorichi would be a little shocked as it as the two would, you know, sort of look and give each other a give each other, you know. Well, Yorichi would give Deku a sly grin as Deku would only have his eyebrow raised. So yeah. Bago would be, you know, would be happy. Would be happy. So, because he, he wants to beat the shit out of Izuku and show that, you know, he's on top. So, the two would make their way towards the building. As All Might would explain the rules. Telling them that the villain team must protect this bomb and not allow the heroes to get their hands on it. They could either wait out the time limit protecting the bomb or subdue or subdue uh, the heroes. While the heroes can also subdue either or win by subduing the villains or touching the bomb. And you know, Bako and Yorichi being prepared, you know, finally done with their prepar preparations. Ozuku and Ochako would head towards the, uh, would head towards the uh, building. As Ochako would ask Ozuku whether he has a plan or not. As he would speak out saying, well, Bak, you know when Bak, that Bak, okay, he would, he's most likely going to come after me wanting to prove something or some boy. That you, well, you can go after Yorichi. Yorichi, she most likely would be protecting the bomb. As Ashaka would speak, would speak out saying, do you think I can I can take her or not? As Azuka's like Sure You know, I'll be lying cause he he doesn't think Ochako could you know stands a chance, but he doesn't want to be me. So as they would hear the uh, hear the explosions down the hall down the hall, Ochako would make her way upstairs as Deku would would be standing in the hallway waiting for Baku. And as Baku, who is charging down the hallway, 
would finally lay, lay eyes on Izuku, he would charge straight at him. Straight at him, like Deku, as he would try to hit hit him with an explosion. As Deku would dodge this by by you know substituting into a flock of ravens, as he would be behind Bakugo, as he kicks him in the back, back kind of sending him, you know, flying as Bakugo would regain his balance in the air with, uh, with his explosions that he would turn around, turn around facing Izuku. It's like, finally, I get to beat that shit-eating grin off of you, you stupid nerd. And Izuku weirded out weirded out at this statement since he barely smiles especially around Bakugo but he would just ignore this as he gets into his stance as the two are ready to fight Bakugo would charge towards towards Izuku with an explosion as Izuku would easily parry this grabbing Bakugo's arm, turning him around, turning him around, slamming him towards the wall, towards the wall, as Bakugo would swing towards Izuku, Izuku, as he, Izuku would duck, but as he ducks, an explosion would come towards Chase. As Deku would backflip out of the way, flip out of the way, jumping down the hallway as he would go through a few hand signs saying fire style, Phoenix Fire, Fireball Jutsu. As multiple fireballs would shoot towards Bakugo, where it in the class, everybody they would find this battle awesome, as the, the fire would actually catch the attention of Todoroki, as he's kind of irritated to see another fire user. So, Bakugo would be able to dodge two of the fireballs, but the last one was able to hit. Was able to hit. He's you know, kind of sent flying back. Line back as Deku using this as a distraction charged towards Bakugo, kneeing him into the, in the face. In the face, as Bakugo was kind of sent flying into the air, as Azuku would be behind Bakugo as he's in the air. In the air. As he would kick Bakugo in the side, in the side of his stomach, then getting up from there in midair, punch Bakugo in the in the front of his stomach. As Bakugo would be slant, sent flying down to the ground. As boom, with a kick to the head, Azuku would would perform a lion's barrage on Bakugo, knocking him out. As he flips from that, patting down whatever dust is on him, as he would tie Bakugo up with uh the that rescue whatever tape. As the class would be amazed at Deku's fighting skills. Fighting skills. But wonder at the fact that he has like a half and half quirk with that uh, cloning stuff and the fire. 
but yeah. After defeating Bakugo, Deku would go after Ochako. Only to find her tied up, tied up with her own <laughs> rescue tape by Yorichi. As the two would stare each other down. Stare each other down. As Yorichi's like, ah, who would have thought that we'd get a proper rematch? Huh? Is it on red eyes? As Deku would get into his stance, saying, I've been meaning to get you back from that last ass whooping you did on me. Last whooping you did on me. All those years ago. Almost breaking my arm if it wasn't for me. If it wasn't for my mother. <laughs> As Yorichi would say. Always the mama's boy, huh? Oh well, as she would get into her stance, as the two would stare each other down a bit longer, until boom, boom, a burst of dust from their feet as the two charge towards each other, towards each other clashing both of their hands hands as they you know struggle to get you know some bearing from each other as Deku would try to take a swing but Yorichi would easily would easily body from that and then boom kicking Deku Deku at the back of, at his back as he kind of goes flying until he flips Flips, throwing two shurikens at Yorichi as he easily dodges it, throwing a kunai of her own. Kunai of her own. But Deku would easily catch would easily catch it. Catch it as he lands on the ground, not knowing that the kunai has an explosive tag on it. As it blows up as it would blow up, but Deku would easily substitute substitute from uh, that explosion as Yurichi would closely follow by as the two would begin in a Tutsu, you know, battle. As Yurichi would try to, you know, get the upper hand on him, but Deku's, Deku would hit, you know, alongside his Sharingan and the natural skills that he honed over the years would easily keep up as the two are you know having this epic new battle as the cold class would be amazed of what these guys are doing guys are doing Yuri Yorichi would you know would bounce Deku's chest as she goes through a few hand signs shooting a wind bullet at Deku as he would go through go through a few hand signs putting his hand on the ground as an earth wall would form blocking the air bullets the air bullet as as he would Destroy the earth wall. Destroy the earth wall, making like a dust smoke screen. Smoke screen to blind Yorichi as he would go do some hand signs once more as he fires a great fireball jutsu. Fireball jutsu. As it head, as it you know, kind of head towards Yorichi, Yorichi, but at the last minute, before impact, 
she would do the headhunter jutsu going under underground as the fireball would flow flow past her hitting a wall as she would come up from under Deku's feet feet with an uppercut that Deku would easily dodge so as the fight would seem to go on neither side would be able to get the upper hand the upper hand as <laughs> before anyone can take the next swing the next you know swing all might would call out saying hero team wins which would you know shock Yorichi Yorichi but then she would you know sort of figure out that the fireball that Deku used wasn't the great fireball that he used wasn't for her as she would look back towards Ochako touching the bomb as the uh as the uh fireball as the the, the rope that was or tape that was around her was kind of burnt off and Ochako wasn't engulfed by the fireball it was that as the fireball you know was gliding through the air or something the side of the fireball was slightly touched the uh slightly touched the tape allowing Ochako to be free so yeah So yeah, oh, Yurichi would you know, kind of shrug her shoulders, saying, "Huh, guess we can't have that proper rematch after all. <laughs> we're just way too, e we're just way too even." And that's a little irritating, but whatever. As she would you know, walk away, walk away. As you know, Chaco. Excited, ex excited, would you know? Look towards her partner, saying that that fight between you and Yurichi was awesome. And I just can't believe we won, though. As by as Deku would just say, "Well, it's all thanks to you. Thanks to you, you know, trying to be nice, trying to be nice." It's the Inko in him. Well, there is no Inko in him. He's not related to her. But, uh... It's the Inko that raised him inside him. Yes, you know, trying to make nice to some folks. You know, make some friends. And this would only make Ochako blush as the head out head out Baka would be cut from his would cut, be cut free from his you know tape as he's enraged at the fact that he lost against Deku as he feels the next time they fight he's gonna get him back for sure and he's not the only one who feels that way as Todoroki would be irritated at the fact that there's another fire user. So yeah, that's pretty much how the day goes. As the day goes, everything else will be going as canon. So that's pretty much how it is, and I, I think I might end it off here. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it all, and uh. I think I'm going uh, to see you guys later. Later with, you know, another what if, I guess. Not a new one, but, you know, the ones I already have. We'll see. But, you know, for now, goodbye.